Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Here in my hand I have an HD Home Run 4K Flex Tuner and it's very similar to the HD Home Run 4K Connect Tuner. The only real difference being the fact that this tuner has a USB port on the back that can be connected to a drive and therefore store local recordings. But in any event, this is a very simple device and really handy in the home lab. It has a um, uh, coax connector for an antenna and then it has an ethernet connector on the back as well. So today we want to talk about the HD Home Run Flex Tuner and some things we can do with it. And specifically we want to talk about using the HD Home Run 4K Tuner to play uh, the 4K ATSC 3.0 channels on both Plex and Jellyfin. So HD Home Run 4K Flex tuners have two ATSC 1.0 tuners and two ATSC 3.0 tuners, otherwise known as next gen TV tuners. ATSC 1 supports up to 1080 interlaced broadcast, which basically means 1920 by 1080 resolution, whereas ATSC 3.0 supports up to 2160p broadcast, which are the 4K broadcast at a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And then Plexa Jellyfin can access ATSC 3.0 broadcast media from this HD Home Run 4K Flex tuners, but they will not have audio. So this is because ATS 3.0 uses Dolby AC4 audio, whereas ATSC 1.0 uses Dolby AC3 audio. And the FFmpeg network, or framework I should say, lacks the support for AC4 audio. And so that's why when you're on Plex or Jellyfin and you tune in an ATSC 3.0 channel, you will not hear any audio. And this video is a little bit about how we can fix that. So we're going to discuss one possible solution. So John B7 over on GitHub has built an HD home run emulator that accepts incoming ATSC 3.0 signals from an HD home run 4K ATSC 3 tuner. And then his project, which is called HDHR-AC4, pretends to be an HD home run device and then it converts the AC4 audio that it gets from the ATSC 4K broadcast to AC3 audio. So this allows both Plex and Jellyfin to access and play content from the ATSC 3.0 tuners and yet they'll have audio, although the audio will be downgraded to AC3 audio. The trick or hack used to make this possible is to utilize the FFmpeg binaries from the beta version of the MB video server, which has AC4 audio support. And this has limitations as well, and we'll discuss those, but the resulting video stream is much improved over an ATSC 1.0 tuner, which handles only 1080 interlaced content. So as a little bit of a review and an introduction, here I am inside of my Plex server, and I've gone over to my settings in the upper right hand corner, and I've gone down to TV or live TV and DVR. And you can see here I have two tuners listed. So the first tuner that has 119 channels enabled is actually my real HD Home Run 4K Flex tuner. And I've got all of the channels checked off on it that I want to have out here. 
and it says it has 159 channels total detected in my area and I have 119 of them enabled. So if you look down here, there's a second tuner and that I got through add another device and it says local broadcast listings, 159 channels and it says it's also an HD Home Run Flex 4K. If we click on the enabled channels, it only lists the channels that are in the 100s range, which at least in my city, those all are the uh, HEVC or the high definition uh, next gen 4K channels. And so I have most of those checked off here. This second tuner that I listed with only seven channels enabled is actually not a real tuner, but it is an emulated tuner with this project that we're going to take a look at here shortly. And so it shows up as a second tuner in my Plex configuration. Here we are on a Jellyfin configuration. I go up to the hamburger menu and I go down to dashboard and I come over here and select the live TV. And when I select the live TV, we have tuner devices and I did add a second tuner device. This one over here, which is at the 192.168.30.134 address is my HD Home Run Flex 4K. And this tuner over here on the left is at 192.168.30.201, which is the emulated tuner through that particular project. And in the case of Jellyfin, you don't see anything in particular that's different about that tuner. You can just see that that tuner has been added to the configuration. If I list the channel guide grid for Jellyfin, you can see that it begins at all the 2.1, 2.2 channels, which are all the digital channels. But if I scroll all the way to the bottom of this listing here, you can see that eventually it does pick up the 100 series channels, which are the next gen TV 4K channels. And you don't see any listings for the guide because there are no guide listings that come through. But if I click one of them, for example, this 102.1 here for KPRC, it will come up to a display that looks somewhat like this. And if I click the play button, it will go out and actually connect to the channel. One of the clues that you're connecting to a 4K channel is it takes a lot longer to connect to it than it does to connect to a normal HD channel. I had an injury and... So that's a high def channel. Unfortunately, I'm recording in HD, so you're not seeing anything beyond a 1080p resolution in this particular case. So when looking back at my Plex server and looking down at the folder that records the video recordings, you're going to notice that it records a file of type.ts. And that's true whether you're recording either in Plex or if you're recording over on Jellyfin. As I mentioned in the introduction to this program, the TS format was originally used for MPEG-2 compressed video data on DVDs. And in taking a closer look at both the TS files recorded through the Plex server and the TS files recorded through Jellyfin, despite the fact that I had recorded both of them from the next gen TV channel, which I knew for a fact was a 4K signal, it was recording at only 1080p and it's interesting that I point out 1080p because the other thing that I want to let you know about is the fact that normally if you have an ATSC one tuner it's actually going to be broadcasting at 1080 interlaced and I did notice a significant improvement in quality uh, in both viewing and in recording the 1080p or the 1080 progressive signal. So that was a big difference. The other difference I would have to say is that clearly we are watching a channel that is only 1080p, but we're not recording the channel 
in 1080 or we are recording the channel in 1080p but we're neither watching it nor are we recording it in high def so you say why use the ATSC 3 tuners at this point um, especially since they lack audio and the best answer to that is because you get better quality on the uh, 1080 progressive view channel is one answer to the question the second answer to the question is that you get a much better channel reception uh, experience and signal experience with ATSC 3 and it can generally uh, do a lot better in poor uh, reception conditions for example during storms so without the emulated tuner if we were to watch the ATSC 3 channels from either Plex or Jellyfin, we would be watching them except without any audio. So what this particular project does is it takes the signal from the ATSC 3 tuner, the next gen tuner, and it decodes the AC4 Dolby audio and makes it AC3 Dolby audio. And I hope at some time in the future, when both Plex and Jellyfin are upgraded, they'll handle AC for audio. And if not, at least they'll begin to handle the high definition ATS-3 signal. And of course, a workaround to this is that you can probably go out and use the HD Home Run application today to watch things. Uh, and you'll get uh, presumably a 4K signal. But I would like to say that my experience so far has been that I've seen much higher quality in watching the signal that comes off of this um, emulated uh, tuner that takes its stream from the real HD home run tuner. So let's go install this product by first of all doing the following wget to pull the zip file down from GitHub. Let's unzip the project. Now we can delete the original zip file. Let's go ahead and rename this project to HD Home Run just for convenience and then CD into the HD Home Run folder. Let's now go get the install file for the MB project, which will have the code in it necessary to do our AC4 decoding. So we go ahead and download the MB media server file. Next we want to go edit the Docker file and scroll down to where they have the MB server deb file that we just downloaded and you'll notice that this version is 4.8.0.21 and in reality we downloaded version 4.8.0.36 so we want to change it in these two locations on these lines and once we do that we can go ahead and save the file out and exit the editor next we want to do a docker build on that docker file After the Docker build completes, you want to do a nano on docker-compose.yml. And then in the show notes, we'll include the contents of this file, but they're very simple. There are three environment variables. The first one is the HDHR IP, and this should be the IP address of your real HD home run tuner. The next one is the IP address of this server instance that we have here. And the last one, device ID uh, under bar swap equals to one is a recommended setting to be able to recognize the HD home run emulated tuner correctly. So we do a control O to write that file out. We hit enter and a control X to exit the nano editor. 
In order to run our project, I simply do a docker space compose space up dash D and it will go ahead and create the container. It's not pulling the container down from the Docker Hub because we built it locally. And now that it's started, we should be able to do a Docker Compose space PS. And you can see that it is up and running. In order to test the container, we can go to the web address of that container or the IP address that we specified, which is in my case 192.168.30.181. And that's where our emulated HD uh, home run tuner is running. If I hit enter, it will come back and simply say uh, its version number and that it is called HD HR AC4 and it will call out the website of the GitHub project, but that means that it is up and running. At this point in time, all you really need to do is go back to either your Jellyfin configuration or your Plex configuration and add this as a second tuner. So now that my tuner has been added in my Jellyfin, for example, I can go over here and click on a 102.1 channel, which is a local broadcast channel, and I can click the play button and it will go out and connect to the ATSC 3.0 tuner, the HD home run, but it will use the emulated tuner to get the decoded AC3 audio. Monday at 5.40 a.m. Mosquitoes go after everyone, but you might be a mosquito magnet. Why these pesky biters? So there you go as an example. Uh, normally, if we had just tuned that uh, channel straight up without this project, we would not have had any audio in it. So I hope this is helpful. In summary, ATSC 3 supports only Dolby AC4 audio and players that support AC4 audio are rare. Recordings on Plex and Jellyfin both use the .ts format, which is the video transport stream format. The .ts format was originally used for MPEG-2 compressed video data on DVDs, but it's used to record both Plex and Jellyfin content as well from the live TV. An ATSC 1 video is interlaced, whereas ATSC 3.0 video is progressive scanned. So this tutorial showed how to display an ATSC 3 broadcast source using AC3 audio on both Plex and Jellyfin. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.